Well, it's me. I was out here. Decided to go ahead and set up another uh, six bucket planter. And what I've done is I've already went out here on my lot right over there. <laughs> you can see all the trees. And got broken down tree, decayed pieces of bark, that kind of thing. And I've got plenty of it over here on this other lot. And uh, I wasn't sure I showed you exactly each step that I do to build my planters. But I know I showed you how to do put the, the planters, the bucket planter together. But I also went and got a, a lot of the vines and uh, leaves and stuff off of some of my plants. And what I'm going to do is put some of this stuff right down on top of the, um, well, it's hard to do it with one, I mean, yeah, just one hand. So I'm gonna put this over here and hopefully I can show you what I'm doing. But anyway, <laughs> you saw the bark down in there. I took some of these old vines because we're going to get a freeze in probably about a week or so. And these cucumber vines and other melon vines are not going to survive the freeze. So, I'm going to go ahead and put... some of this down in the buckets right on top of the broken down rotted wood and the tree bark that's in the very bottom. And like I said, I did glue, put glue around my post in my buckets. So my pots will drain up here you know, like here, instead of on the bottom. Because I want them to hold a little bit of moisture. Now, putting something like this in there, you can plant right away. Because it's not anything that's going to attract the ants. But if you put a lot of table scraps in there, you need to wait a while before you plant. Because they do attract the ants. And if you're not careful, as your roots try to grow to your new plants, the ants are going to eat them. So that's one reason when some people try to compost in place and plant in it right away, their plants don't survive. But I'm going to mostly have kale, spinach, maybe uh, a few onions or garlic, something like that in these. It'll be winter crops. Because I'm told, you know, that the uh, kale seeds will germinate better in the colder weather, cooler weather, than they do in the, in the hot heat. I mean, I don't seem to have any problem getting my seeds to come up at all with either temperature because I planted some back um, earlier in the season and they, they grew. I mean, you saw that. They all grew. And I'm going to push those down a little bit because I'm going to put dirt on top. And most of my dirt is native soil. Right here that I dug up from under the trees. It's just broken down leaves, wood bark, 
trees. Like oh, never got this bucket over here. We ended up being so heavy. Yeah, I got this planter set up last night. Well, it was just the edge of dark when I finished with it. I mean, that's all good soil right there. I just moved the, the tree bark back. And... Don't want all those roots in there because I don't want those old long vines and stuff growing in there, but. Let's see if I can put this on the other side. <laughs> and it's not that hot today, but I'll tell you what. I'm sweating. I'm sweating already. But wanted to show you too what I was talking about. This is all broken down leaves, tree bark, and stuff like that that I got from under my tree over there. Same place where I got the rotted wood that I've got down in the bottom. And I'm just putting that all in there. <laughs> oh, I'm sweating. Got a little bit too much in there. That'll help weight it down some. So my buckets connect good. But see. This is all just broken down, rotted wood. Throw those roots out of there. <laughs> Nothing growing but what I plant in there. I forgot to get my uh, other dirt that I was going to put in there. Got and left it over there close to the shed. But it's just a potting mix that I'm going to put in the very top. Just a little.
box in there. And I didn't put much, just a little. There's probably only about an inch of that in there. But you can see I filled it up. The bucket's about three quarters of the way up the, the bucket. And I do that because over the winter months, all of that broken down bark, the rotted leaves and all that other stuff is going to break down even more. And it'll settle. It'll settle even lower. Now I've already got seed in those bottom buckets. And I'm getting ready to put these plants right here and the, these up here. But I need do need to put a little bit of water in there. I forgot to get my water. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid if I planted the seed this time of year that uh, the seed wouldn't come up. But I did some research on it and it seems that um, Kale and for perpetual spinach, which is basically the same thing. Their seeds love it better when it's 70 or below. They germinate better in the colder weather, so we'll see what happens. Because I'm going to put those plant, few plants in there, and then I'm going to put some more um, seeds in there as well. And we'll see what happens. I mean, it's supposed to get down to right about freezing in about another week and a half or so. That'll be the first even close to freezing temperatures we've had so far this summer. So we'll see what happens. And y'all to know I didn't bring my seed out here either. But that's okay. And I didn't water yesterday because we were supposed to get rain. And it did rain, but it was a very little bit. And when we, we got very little bit of rain. Well, somebody around here has got loud mufflers. <laughs> And I thought about putting stakes in for vines to grow and all that stuff on these, but I don't think I want to do that on my buckets. This is a good way to test out my uh, holes. To see how they're gonna drain. And this stuff, when you first put it in there, it, it's, it takes a little while to soak down in the bucket, in the dirt, because it's all so dry. Well, it will eventually soak down in there and the water will eventually start running out the holes. 
mean, it already started a little bit right there on that hole. Not much, though. You can't tell it. But remember, I've got it like an inch up from the bottom of the bucket. So it's got to fill that bucket an inch in the bottom before it's going to start running out. And as dry as that stuff is, there may no water run out of it quite yet because it's not quite that dry. I mean, it's not that wet. If it had already been wet down, it probably would have. But they say it's, it's a good time to plant your lettuce. So I've got lettuce right there. So... And we'll see what happens with it. I'm going to move that. Don't know what you can see. It is an overcast day today. Or maybe I'll put four. They start looking too clouded. I mean, crowded, I can move them, I guess. Little bitty one right there. But look at the roots on it. It's got some pretty long roots on it. It might survive. We'll see. This is a lettuce here. And they come up from seed that I had planted. But they were getting a little overcrowded over there in that other one. So, and that one's got a pretty good long root on it. Look at that. The root's longer than the top. It's going down in that... Uh, dish pan over there to get some and see the roots on that <laughs> and that's all some that I started from seed in those dish pans and this is a form of a lettuce that I'm going to put in this one Some of these plants will get pretty big, but I'm going to plant at least four of each. You see the roots right there? Just in case one doesn't make it. And like I said, if they, they start getting... Let's see that one. If they start getting too thick, I mean, you know, crowding one another out, with three, I mean four plants, then I can pull one out or something. They're not very big, but they say sometimes it's better to transplant them when they're not so big. And it looks like I'm only going to have about three for this one. I can probably go over there and find another one or two. You know, let me do that because that's not even one. Go over there and see if I can find another decent one to pull out. Cause see how how good this kale is growing, but it gets kind of big, and maybe I'll pull that one out. Oh, broke part of the root off. I should have had a spoon. Look at there, I got a tomato plant. Tomato plant coming up there.
Okay, two good ones right here. Because if you give them plenty of room, they'll get pretty big. If you crowd them up, it kind of stunts their growth. And I'll have to make a bigger hole, I think. A little deeper. Because it's got a pretty good root on there. So. Look there, I didn't realize it. <laughs> Pulled up a tomato plant. I wish I had a greenhouse that I could keep my tomato plants in over the winter months, but I can prolong my growing season a little bit with mine with a light, you know, in there for a little bit of heat. But, um, I'm going to put this one right up here. <laughs> For now, I mean, it's a pretty good kale plant right there. And that's one that come up in the dish pan from my seed that I planted. Don't want to plant it too deep. But I want it to get down in there good enough that it'll have a good chance to live. So, maybe I won't put any seed in that. Because I've got seeds in the bottom one too. And that one over there, now I got a tomato plant in there. I don't know why I stuck it in there because I know as soon as it freezes, it's going to kill that. So we'll see. Well, I thought I was going to have to put um, the um, seed in there, but. I'm not going to have any room to put seed. <laughs> and if all those other seed come up and they get crowded, what I'll do is just um, thin them out, get me some more buckets fixed, and um, go ahead and transplant them in the other buckets. Because I love greens. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not showing you what I'm doing, but I was picking up these containers and putting them over there. I don't know what's going on with the focus of my camera. It's not focusing right or something. Go ahead and put those up. And I also wanted to show you. I mean, look, my tomato plants are still producing tomatoes. There's a ripe one right there. <laughs> dirty now but and see I still get and I've got green ones so there's a green one up there I may have to pick green ones a little bit later before it freezes even if they're green and make chow chow out of them or something but I picked a couple of them over here yesterday that were ripe. What is it with my camera? Some setting is off or something. I don't know what the deal is. There. I don't know what it was doing. 
but you see all my Brussels sprouts. I've been harvesting leaves off of those things, and it seems like the more I harvest, the more leaves grow. And I had a few garlic that I stuck down in there, and of course they're not big enough to pick yet, but and I'm still watching that guy down there. That's a that's a, I think one of the biggest tomatoes I've had this year. But it's not turning ripe yet, so let me put this down. Wanted to come in here and check on my rose bushes, my rose cuttings. Look at there. These are leaving good because they're bigger. If you'll notice, most of them are big around. They're probably almost as big as my index finger. And that one right there is putting out leaves. But that does not mean that it's uh, rooted yet. It's going to be a while before it puts out roots. Yeah, but that's what you want to see right there. You want to see your uh, rose cuttings start putting out leaves. That lets you know that it's living and it's, you know, trying to grow. And they didn't have leaves on them when I put them in there. But you can see they're all putting out little leaf buds. And I put compost tea down in the bottom to where the pots will soak up the compost tea as it needs it. Because you've got to keep your dirt moist for your, you know, your rose cuttings to survive and to start rooting. Oh, I wanted to show you too. If you're using totes like this, these little lids, the tops, or the handles, or whatever you want to call them, if you'll close them, and then put your um, lid on top, it'll keep a little air gap between the tote and the lid, so your tote will get some air in there. And see, those are li living pretty good too, because look at there. It's putting out leaves right there. But I wanted to show you the first go round that I had put in here. All those cuttings were too small. And I wanted to show you what would happen with the smaller cuttings versus the bigger ones. Especially on these knockout roses. You've got to have a substantial cutting. At least, you know, maybe the size of your finger, not quite as big. You can see right there. If you want them to survive and to root and make you a nice rose bush for the springtime. Yeah, just uh, get you a watering can or something that you can put your compost tea down in the bottom with so you don't have to pour it directly into your little pots. I just pour it down in the bottom and leave enough to cover the bottom. To where the pots can gradually soak up the compost tea as they need it. Well, that's not cooperating with me. <laughs> but these in these uh, miniature greenhouses are doing pretty good too. You can't see them because they're kind of fogged up. But... They're living in there, and this one down here in the uh, um, Mountain Dew bottle, it's starting to put out a little bit of leaves in there, if you can see. So it's doing good even in the, the shaded green one. So that just shows me that whether I have the clear white bottle or the Mountain Dew bottle, you can root roses in it. And I'm going to have to do something about my greenhouse come springtime. Because I don't think it'll survive. The sides of it won't survive another winter. If it makes it through this winter, it'll be doing good. And I've still been steadily picking tomatoes. And I've still got green ones on there. And I hope a lot more of them will get right before we have our first freeze. we got another about another week and a half or so before we have a hint of a freeze coming up. So I'm hoping they have time to um, 
ripen up before the freeze hits. But look at that. That is two big tomatoes right there. The other two are not quite as big, but they're getting there. I think that was one of the slicing tomato plants that I ended up with a stray seed in the compost. But you can see all my Brussels sprouts are doing good. Even these little tiny ones are now putting out leaves. So, and these bigger ones, I mean, they're just growing like crazy. And I've been harvesting the leaves off of them, but it seems like the more I harvest the leaves, the more they put out. Yeah, and I'm going to have to pretty soon come out here and harvest my peppers again <laughs> and my eggplant again. Got peppers down there. Look at there. On that little tiny bush, put out a big old pepper like that. Scrawny bush, but it put out a big old pepper. <laughs> and see those pepper plants that are growing in that potting mix bag that I made a flower pot out of. My Brussels sprouts are growing in here. And I got those tomatoes coming up in there too. Get a couple of those leaves off. I don't like the way they look. Look like a moth got into them. But you can see the marigolds love the cooler temperatures. <laughs> My banana pepper bush does too. Look at that. <laughs> it's got banana peppers everywhere. Tomatoes up there. And I got to come out here and get my tomatillos too. I've been picking them steadily as I see them, you know, looking like they're getting ripe enough. Because I don't want them to fall to the ground. Sometimes if you let them fall to the ground, the ants get in them. And throw them in there. That'll make a good comp compost from a mandevilla and my clematis. Yeah, this one got more sun. This clematis did on this arbor. I mean, it survived, but it, it's not looking as good as the one over here that uh, was in the shade a lot. Because, see, it's putting out blue flowers. <laughs> some of them are blue. And some of them are like a shocking pink color. The blue ones are opening right now. That's pretty. <laughs> There's a pink one. I don't know if you can show it. There's a pink one. Right up there. Get ready to open. So I thought mixing the colors would be really pretty when they're all blooming on this arbor. But you can see this one fared. Look at the long runner. I need to come out here and stake them up a little bit. Because this one has been growing like crazy. It gets a little bit more protection than the other ones do from the sun. My peppermints back up. <laughs> and see my mums that I've started rooting? They're blooming. So you know they're living. And that was just a cutting. And I stuck one down out here too. Right there. Because that pot stays moist enough that the mum should love it in there. My poor pig took a beating in that wind. And I went ahead and stuck a mum down in that one, a little little cutting.
but you can see the purple mums are blooming and they love it they'll bloom right on through the snow i've seen it snow on them cover the plants and as soon as the snow melts the i mean the flowers will stick out above the snow i don't have as many out here as i used to because that drought got rid of a lot of them but they'll come back i've got a little plant of them right there it's so tiny you can't hardly tell what it is but that's a mum that is a mum down there but like i said the only ones that i've had survive from year to year are the purple and that's another aloe vera that was started from the mother plant And there's those mums I put in that spot. They're looking good. The crepe myrtle I planted this summer is looking good. I don't have to worry about that. It'll be all right. And the other ones will come back out as soon as springtime hits around. They kind of die back in the winter, cold months, and kind of go dormant. And that crepe myrtle is doing pretty good. I put both of those out this summer. Rose bushes. Yeah, I'll give you another look on the rose bush. You can get an update on them. But they're putting out new leaves, so they're doing okay. <laughs> and that one. I wanted to show you out here in my moonflowers. I got to get the moonflowers out of here. Because I've got um, perpetual spinach plants growing in here. <laughs> so I need to pull some of this other stuff out. Because I'd rather have the moonflowers growing out here in the rock garden than in here. And they're going to open up some more flowers, look, looks like. Got two flowers fixing to open. My mom's there. See, they're all purple. Little rose bush is struggling, but it's still there. If it survives the winter, it'll take off next summer. And those mums, and they're all purple. Like I said, they're the only ones that I've had to survive from year to year are the purple ones. And see, they're putting out new leaves. since the, all the rain. That one's grown a little bit. That one still looks good. And that one does too. <laughs> and I really do need to come out here and get more of these seeds from this plant. And see, all the leaves on these, even if you get bugs on them, like in the end of the um, summer, like it is now, they lose, lose their leaves. So you don't have to worry about spraying them. I mean, they'll lose their leaves. If there's any bugs on them, the bugs are going to fall with the leaves. Oh, my God pods opening right there. I need to get them off because they're dropping seeds. <laughs> I'll have seeds all growing out here. There's a seed pod right there. One there started. But look at this. I've still got blooms on my okra. They're still producing little okra. So I come out here about every other day and I'll cut a couple of okra and I'll throw them on the counter and sooner or later I'll have enough to 
throw in the pan. <laughs> Let's see, I've got uh, some of the lettuce. I've got uh, perpetual spinach growing in here. I've got bell pepper. And it's got a little pepper on it. I've got tomatoes falling. And see, I've got tomatoes right there. come out here later and pick those before they fall but I got peppers growing in this pot because the flower that was in it has died off and look at there as little as that plant is it's got a bell pepper and that one's got one started right there But I have perpetual spinach here. And I probably need to pull those out and put them in those other pots. And they'll, they probably do a lot better. Because this pot has basically been taken over by moonflowers. I'll have to uh, pull out my perpetual spinach, put them in my buckets. And then get all the moonflowers out of here, I think, and put them somewhere else. Look at there. <laughs> Tomatoes. Like I said, I'll have to come out here later and not forget about it. And, and see, if I need them, I've got plenty more clippings off of my rose bushes. Because <laughs> I haven't trimmed them all back yet. I was just kind of waiting to see what the uh, cuttings do. And those are trying to bloom again. These are clematis and uh, another vine. It, it had on the package that it was a hollyhock, but I thought a hollyhock grew in a, like a plant, not a vine. And these things were growing in a vine. So I put them back here with the Clematis. I've got blue clematis and I've got pink clematis. The wind kind of got to that one, but isn't that a pretty color? It's got more fixing to open there, buds. Let's see, this one's going to be a pink one. Pink one up there fixing to open. It's got all kind of seeds in there. See the seeds they put out? I'll have to come out here and gather seeds from it, I guess. Those have turned black already. Those are good. When they turn black like that, you know they're good seeds. But yeah, I'll have to come out here and harvest some of those. Because I might want to put them somewhere else in the yard. If they drop to the ground here, they're going to try to come up here. Which I guess is alright because I can always pull the plants out and put them somewhere else. But those are surviving. And like I said, I had put... Uh, seeds in there so and those pretty tomatoes are just getting bigger and bigger i hope they ripen up i mean because that's a pretty pretty good sized tomato right there and it's not quit growing yet and my onions I planted the onion down in there, and my God, it's put out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shoots from that one onion bulb that I put down in there. I tried to pull one out the other day, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to pull it out unless I pull the whole clump out. 
I've never seen it do that before. Most of them are growing individually, but... I don't like that one. It's a big old clump. Not quite as big as that, but... So I don't know. We'll see what happens with those. <laughs> First time I've planted those type of onions. But, oh, I just wish it was the beginning of summer because, look, <laughs> those are some really healthy tomato plants that just came up voluntarily. I got another one right there. So that's three healthy tomato plants in this pot that came up with my radish and my beets and everything else I've got in there. Same with over here. Look, there's one, two three four five six tomato plants growing in there that came up from the compost so if it was back the beginning of the summer i'd have plenty of tomato plants to pull out and set them out around the yard anywhere i wanted them As you can tell here, I've been harvesting leaves. Look at that. <laughs> when I come out here and harvest them, I harvest some off of each plant of the greens, and I just mix them all together. And I just throw them in a frying pan. or Yeah, I put them in a frying pan, and I kind of saute them, more or less steam them, because they're uh, tender. They're tender uh, leaves when you pick them like that. And that one's kind of getting top heavy. Yeah, next year I'm going to have to space my plants out a little ways. And probably if I space them out, they won't grow as good as they're growing now. <laughs> but I've got to start gathering more of my zinnia seed too. So I'll have zinnia seed for next year. There's some right there. They're kind of wet, damp because it rained on them. But So I'll leave them there and let them dry out from the rain. And then I'll harvest them. But see, even though it's November, what, 8th or 9th? My squash plants and zucchinis trying to put out fruit. They're blooming. Look at that. If they had another three or four weeks, I'd be getting fruit off of them. And there's the ones we just planted. So. Oh, and I forgot to show you I had ordered online a year ago this insulin plant. That's what this is right here. It's an insulin plant. They claim it's good for diabetics. Now, I don't know if they put it in a smoothie or how they harvest it. But I had one little or two little stalks of it, cuttings. And I thought once it died down last year for the winter that it was dead and gone. But you can see right there, I've got three plants come up from that one cutting that was in there. And I had one over here, but it, I think it just gave way. But yeah, I've got three, three insolent plants. They call it insulinia or insulina or something like that. But I saw it online and it said it was it was a plant for diabetics. <laughs> so like I said, I don't know how they harvest it or anything about it. But 
Evidently, it's a perennial. <laughs> and I don't see another one. Because I had one over here in this pot at one time. And I think the peppermint's taking it all over. Yeah, if you, you get peppermint plant started, unless you want them to take over your yard. Oh, here it is. I knew I had one over here. That's an insulant plant right there. Insulina, as they call it. And that pepper, that pepper plant right here started growing up in the same pot. So evidently they like one another. <laughs> because the pepper plant's growing there. And there's that insulina plant. So... I'll know now that they will, it will survive from one year to the next, even if you don't put it in the house. As long as there's a root left down in the bottom, you'll get another plant out of it, just like that moringa tree. All I had from last year was the root that was in the pot. And I left the root there, and lo and behold, it produced another moringa tree. So... I don't know if I'll ever get one to produce the seed pods that it has on it, but that's a moringa tree. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to get this to be too long and see how good these are growing since I thinned them out. I mean, they're trying to grow better. Because if you have them too thick. And I've got tomato plants coming up everywhere. Tomato plant growing in there. Onions. And I've got the broccoli growing here. And you can tell I've harvested a, a ton of leaves off of them. I've got an oak tree growing up in there too. Don't need that in there. crows talking to me anyway i'm about to run out of memory so i'm gonna say like share subscribe to my videos and y'all have a blessed day